If you're looking into spending a few days in Beijing, China anytime soon, I hope this video will help you prepare and plan for your upcoming trip. Hi friend, my name is Sarah and welcome back to my channel. I have been back from my summer trip to China for a few months now and now I'm ready to report back to you about my trip. There are a lot of things that I need to catch you up on but I thought into this video I'm going to do a quick recap, hopefully quick, of my five days in Beijing. Let's start from the beginning, from our travel day. And if you have been following my videos for the last, I don't know, a few weeks or so, maybe a couple months, I have been sharing that we are gonna have a long travel day because we are flying from Vegas to LA, LA to Singapore, and then Singapore to Beijing. And when I was trying to calculate how much time we're gonna spend traveling, it's gonna be about 30 plus hours, which I know is pretty insane. And before you comment down below and asking me why I'm not flying directly, let me just tell you why. I actually have transferred some of my credit card points, actually a lot of my credit card points into Singapore Airlines because we were actually planning to go to South Korea in the beginning of the year. But because our family decided to go to China altogether in the summer, we kind of scratched that plan and we decided to use the points to fly to China. And of course, because we are flying Singapore Airlines, we need to do a little stopover in Singapore. So that's why we are flying for so long. So we did the whole travel day and it wasn't actually that bad. And I think it's because we kind of broke it all off. We did have a layover in LAX. We get to relax at the American Express Centurion Lounge. And then we also get to take a shower once we landed in Singapore and freshen up before our six hour flight to Beijing. And right after we arrived in Beijing, we took the train to go to our hotel and we actually stayed at the Grand Hyatt Beijing. It was one of the best hotels I think that I've ever stayed at. So after we check in, we drop off our luggage, we kind of freshen up again. We were getting hungry, so we decided to venture out to the Wang Fujing area because our hotel is literally right next to it like we walk out the door and then it's there and i also need to tell you something about the hotel quickly the grand hyatt beijing is actually inside a mall which is a good point in my book because if we're hungry or if we need something we could just walk out to the mall go to the food court get some snack or food and it's right there so once we walk out of the mall the wang fujing street area is also right there so the first night we just decided to stroll around with not really much in the agenda just to see what we can eat and what we can drink so we did find a little food court in the basement of the Wang Fujing bookstore I think that's what it's called and we got a couple bowls of noodles we found Coco which is a boba store right across from it so of course we had to try one and Ricky and I were super surprised that a big cup of boba milk tea once you converted it to US dollars, it was only $2, which is insane because if you are fond of bobas and you buy them once in a while or every week, no judgment right there, but it's at least $5 in the US. And that is just like the regular size cup. And this one was the larger one for $2. So yeah, it was good. <laughs> So now let's go talk about the second day, which is the first full day in Beijing. And what we learned from our Tokyo trip was not to pack so much stuff on the first full day that you arrive because one, you get tired and two, you can get injured, which is what happened to Ricky's feet last time we were in Tokyo. So this time around, we were being smart and we didn't really have a lot of plan. Uh, we actually woke up a little bit late-ish like maybe i want to say around eight maybe because of the jet lag i think but we slept plenty the night before which is good so we decided to order some breakfast from the hotel inside the room it was just okay we just want honestly i just wanted to try it so we decided to explore the hutongs that are around the beijing area and the first kind of hutong area that we are wanting to explore is close to the drum and the bell tower so we were heading out that way but close to there is also this lake called the Hohai Lake I believe so after we get there through the subway system we were just kind of walking around the lake taking it all in that we actually arrived in China 
for the very first time together safe and sound in one piece and we were actually walking in China and I've always been wanting to go to China it was just kind of like a you know like pinch me moment I guess but um, it was really nice to just walk around taking it all in you know how life looks like in China in Beijing anyways after we stroll around the Hohai Lake area we decided to go to the drum tower and once you get to the entrance you will see that across there's also another tower called the bell tower and I honestly kind of wanted to go to both but I know that there is a very steep set of stairs inside both towers and I know that I don't think Ricky would want to do both so I asked him if we can do at least one and he agreed and honestly I don't think I can do both because I'm not the fittest person out there and I don't think I can do it but anyways we decided to go to the drum tower because there's actually performances that would happen throughout the day there's a group of people who would come in and bang on the drum they are replicas, they're not really the original drum that was built when the tower was built uh, but it was just still pretty cool to experience that performance and also just kind of watch them how they would do the drums back in the day. I believe usually it's to announce something maybe, I really need to do a little bit more research but if anything I will leave some text on the screen so you know what the drum tower was for and I know there, there used to be a lot of the drum towers throughout China but this was kind of like one of the last ones that survived which is why I wanted to go check it out okay so after we check out the drum tower and also the performances we went downstairs and we were hungry so we decided to open Apple map and this was actually also the first time all of the Apple map functions open up for us because now that we're in China we can see everything so we decided to try out this barbecue place that is pretty close by to the drum tower and it was actually a really good experience they have like this unique stove thing and also like the barbecue pan and like I said in my previous video you just scan a QR code and then you can you order from there and then you pay from there as well but a lot of the workers a couple of the workers actually wanted to practice their English with us so they were they keep coming back and talk with us in English and help us cook the meat and stuff they were really really nice so I will try and see if I can find the link to this restaurant if you are gonna be in Beijing and near the drum tower area I would highly recommend this place because the food was good it was affordable and the workers were really nice and really friendly also I'm in the downstairs area because the restaurant is on the second floor there's Hey Tea which is another boba place that is pretty popular in China and to be honest with you me and Ricky were not really a big fan because I think the tea was too milky but I know my sister-in-law and my niece actually like it better because it is milky so I guess it depends on your preference we like cocoa better but I guess hay tea wasn't that bad either alright so after lunch we decided to actually go back to our hotel because again learning from our time in Tokyo we just want to take a quick rest kind of in the middle of the day maybe it's like yeah like around I think 1 or 2 p.m. we were we started to head back to the hotel and after a couple hours of resting we decided to go out again because we got hungry and I decided to go to the Dash Shilan area I think that's what it was called basically again it's kind of like a pedestrian street where you can stroll around there's food, there's stores, there's drinks and stuff that you can check out. But there's this one famous snack called the Old Beijing Rose Duck Roll. It kind of looks like a Chinese burrito. I think we call it mushu. But basically they have roast pork inside with some veggies, some cucumbers, and I want to say hoisin sauce. And the one place that is famous I forgot what it's called but I will put the name here and they are actually everywhere in the Dashilan area so if you are on the main street you'll see one store but there's gonna be a long line of people trying to get that little wrap or that little roll but then if you go on some of the side streets they actually have a couple stores there and it is usually pretty empty and usually it's not that busy if you have been to Beijing before, leave a comment down below on what are some of the favorite things that you did in Beijing and hopefully for anyone else who's watching this video 
and who's actually planning a trip to Beijing that they will get more ideas on what to do in Beijing. So the next day, day three, is when we decided to go to the Summer Palace. Actually, if I look back at my Beijing itinerary, I'm pretty sure that I had the Temple of Heaven also on the same day. However, I definitely underestimated how huge the Summer Palace is. And you definitely need the whole day to be here, in my opinion, because the ground itself is so, so big. And there's also a lot of people like it was kind of making me a little bit anxious. A lot of them were, I think, tourists from other parts of China and they were in this big group tour. And when you see like the tour guide with the little flag, you will see a bunch of people behind them because yeah, it was just very busy. I don't think they actually cap like how many people can visit in a day. If you are someone who like to take it slow, who wants to kind of like look at every single like point of interest that you can look at in Summer Palace, I think you definitely need at least four to six hours i think once you enter the summer palace area there's actually like i said a lot of point of interest when you walk in you'll see that there's like this little made-up city kind of like underneath near the water and apparently the emperor who used to live there wants to recreate a city where he used to frequent i guess and make it look like he was shopping around in that city i will again put the name in the screen because i'm not gonna try to butcher the name but it was actually really cool that you know it's still preserved pretty well and you can definitely see the little shop that they made and stuff like that it actually costs extra to go down to that little town but if you did buy the combination ticket you are able to go down there and i think this is just kind of my bad on the planning part that i didn't think that our ticket would include that until after i pass that area and honestly i don't want to go back again because it was hot there were a lot of people so i guess we're gonna have to go back to summer palace again when we go back to beijing but make sure you check your ticket if you get the combination ticket you actually got admission to like a lot of the extra stuff after we passed by a little bit of that little town we went straight to kind of like the summer palace building area you'll see this big yellow greenish building when we went there there's actually a lot of preservation projects that are going on but there are some fences but you can still see a lot of the summer palace and honestly in my head i thought you would have to climb all the way up to go past to the other side because they have a lot more stuff behind the palace however you can actually just climb a little bit maybe the first second story and then go down and you would go around the side to see the other stuff i think a couple things that i would highly recommend that you visit is one there is this site with the stone boat i think that's what it's called um, there's really nothing to it you can't really go in there but you can see it from like across the way um, and it was just really cool that they kind of built a boat with stone I think it's just kind of a building that looks like a boat. It's not really a boat where it can go around the lake that's there, but it was still a pretty cool sight to see. There's also a big area called the Longest Corridor. I think that's what it's called, the Summer Palace Corridor, but basically it's a really long corridor outside. And we were just kind of trying to walk it inside the corridor itself but again there were a lot of group tours a lot of people so i would say if you want to take a picture where there's nobody in your frame just keep walking along the corridor maybe outside of it not on it because it will be a bit slow because there's a lot of traffic and just walk as far as you can until you find empty spots and then hop onto the corridor and then you can take a picture without all of the crowds and one last thing that i want to say about the summer palace there's actually a summer palace museum and again if you get the combo ticket you'll be able to go in for free and in that area they actually showcase some of the furnitures they used to be in the palace some of their collection and stuff like that if you're interested in that kind of stuff it's there for you and i would highly recommend to check it out at least for 
30 minutes to an hour or so. Okay. One last tip that I have for you if you're going to the Summer Palace is to bring your own ice water if you can or and especially if you are going to visit in the summer because they do sell beverages inside the Summer Palace. Water, Coke, tea, you name it. However, the fridge that they use to store those drinks is not on. Well, it's on, but they don't turn on the refrigeration function of the fridge. So all of the water and the soda and the tea that you would see in a bottle, they were all room temperature, which is understandable because I don't know if it's like a thing, but I think it is a thing that Chinese people do not like to drink cold beverages. So all of them are room temperature. Me and Ricky were like literally dying from the heat outside and there's no ice cold drinks. Day four is the day for the Forbidden City or the Palace Museum. There are so many ways you can visit the Palace Museum. I think I found a website where this local provided like a walking guide throughout the Palace Museum. They, he would buy the tickets for you and he would walk with you inside the Forbidden City and kind of explain what is what. But I think it was actually kind of expensive. Maybe about, maybe it's not as expensive, but I think it was, I wanna say 30 something dollars maybe per person. If you're interested, I'll leave the link down below so you can check it out and you know, see if that's gonna be something for you. But honestly for me, I just wanna go inside to check out the actual Forbidden City because it is one of the UNESCO sites in Beijing. And I wake up at 5 a.m. I think about a week before we were supposed to go in and I got the ticket from the official Palace Museum website and there's actually a couple options for you. You can do the morning admission or the afternoon admission and of course me and Ricky being not morning people we decided to do the afternoon admission and you can start checking in at 11 a.m. You probably want to go a little later instead of early morning because everybody's gonna go early in the morning and it's gonna be super packed. So I think we get there, I wanna say maybe at 11, maybe even around noon, which is actually a bad call because before you enter the Palace Museum, you have to go through security. All of the area, once you get off the subway station, it's basically all blocked off you can only enter until after you go through security. And it was a little bit confusing on which line we're supposed to be on and we kind of went back and forth and kind of wasted some of our time there. But if you are going to the Palace Museum, once you get off the subway station, there's this big line that you'll see in front of you. That is the line to go through security. I'll probably put a footage somewhere here as well, but you'll see which line I'm talking about and that is the line that you have to stand on to go through security to go inside and I do have a few tips for you I believe even if you have the afternoon ticket and you can start checking in at 11 I want to say you can start probably heading out there around 9 30 try and get there around 10 maybe because again the security line is pretty long I'm pretty sure we probably stood out there for about an hour until we got to the area where they would check our bags and our passport and stuff like that. Next tip is also that make sure you have your passport with you at all times because that is your ID when you're in China. And I don't know if I mentioned this in my other videos, but there are a few times when we're going through the subway and when we're trying to exit, there are police who would check the ID of all of the locals. And obviously since we're not local, we have to show our passport because that is our ID so make sure that you bring your passport and have it with you at all times because they do have like a random check especially if you are taking the subway okay another tip that I have for you about visiting the palace museum is to bring a UV umbrella or to wear a hat because there are no shade whatsoever also wear your sunscreen because it is really hot and there's no shade okay another tip that I have for you is that if you are going to the Palace Museum, you'll see how the building is. There's like this big middle building and everybody would swarm through the middle to go through the palace. I would say go to a couple gates and then after that, venture off to the side gates because that is where all of the things are. All of the 
little exhibition about this one queen who used to live in the palace all of her furnitures the room that she used to sleep at and all of that it was just actually really cool and interesting to check out but i feel like also i wasted some time going through the middle gates because again everybody went through that gate it was really busy but if you venture off on the sides it would be empty and one last thing that i feel like you should learn from my mistake is to again plan to spend one whole day at the palace museum i think again we underestimated how big and huge this places are in china when i was inside the forbidden city i kept thinking like how do you live here how many steps do you have to walk every day especially if you work there you have to go from i don't know serving one royalty to another you have to walk so much but it was huge and it was just again crazy amazing huge do not underestimate how big the palace is so make sure you plan to spend the whole day there i think the palace museum will most likely close at 5 p.m every single day and if you go to the official website you can actually pick and choose which exhibition that they have you want to check out and they will kind of create an itinerary for you and i feel like if i would have been more prepared and do just that i would have a better time at the palace museum so learn from my mistakes and make sure you take notes for moving on to the next thing in the video i just want to interrupt this video really quickly just to invite you to subscribe to my channel i think 98 percent of you who are watching my video is not a subscriber and i would love it for you to subscribe to my channel so you won't miss any of my future videos about japan about cruising travel hacking and so much more i hope to see you on the next one and now let's get back to the video so last day is the Great Wall of China day for me. This is the day where we finally get to see the Great Wall of China. And again, if you are going to Beijing, I would highly, highly recommend planning to go to one of the sections of the Great Walls that you can go to from Beijing. There's actually, I wanna say at least three sections of the Great Wall of China you can go to from Beijing. There is one that is the closest from Beijing, I think about 30 minutes or so. I think it's called the Dowling section. I think that's what it is, but I've heard that because it is pretty close to Beijing, everybody goes to that section. And if you have ever seen a video where there's like rows and rows of people trying to walk you know, inside the Great Wall of China, that is the section. So you wanna avoid that. The one that I went to is called the Mutianyu section of the Great Wall of China. And this one was perfect i actually book the tour it's not really a tour but it's a tour from cloak and i will put the link in the description box below so you can check out the tour but i would highly recommend it i think we spend about 30 something dollars per person and it includes the bus transportation from beijing to the great wall and back it also includes like the shuttle bus that you have to take from like the mutianyu great wall center thing to the actual entrance and it also includes two of the sides of the Mutianyu Great Wall a ticket entrance as well by booking this tour it actually helped me a lot with finalizing my plan in Beijing because the Great Wall of China is of course one of the absolute must do if you're in Beijing and at first I was trying to look at private transfer or a private tour guide but it was just really really expensive probably will run you about i want to say 500 dollars total and it's only me and ricky so we couldn't really split it with other people so i think this is the most cost effective to go see the great wall of china i would highly recommend booking it from cloak so the tour that i book is by a company called the Mubus tour or something like that so they do have kind of like their own center in the Mutianyu area so when you get dropped off from Beijing you'll get dropped off at their family center that's what they call it so in there you can buy water and soda and stuff like that for cheaper because it is like a tourist area so everybody is gonna hike up the price you can also buy some souvenirs of the great wall if you want to and if you book through cloak i believe they give you discount as well and the day before you're supposed to go on the tour the tour guide that is assigned to your group will message you i think it depends on what you have but 
the tour guide that I have messaged me through WhatsApp because I already have WhatsApp, but basically they will give you all of the instruction, making sure that you confirm the name on the ticket is the same as your passport and also to confirm your passport number and everything so they will definitely take care of you and i really highly recommend because they are really great very professional and if i were to take anybody else to the great wall of china i would go through this tour i told my mom that i don't think i will do it with her because i think once is enough it was a pretty intense hike in my opinion. Ricky had to stop kind of in the middle because he doesn't want to hurt his foot and I just did the rest on my own and it was probably one of the hardest hike that I've ever done. But it was worth it and I would definitely urge you to do it at least once. It's, it is once in a lifetime experience. I think it's one of those you know, one and done type of experience. And if you are planning to go to Beijing and you are planning to go to the Great Wall, I would highly recommend it. And like I said, I will link everything down in the description box below, so make sure you check it out. Anyways, that is the end of our Beijing part of our trip. I really wish we had one or two, maybe three more nights in Beijing because there is a couple things that I didn't get to go to, like we didn't get to go to the Temple of Heaven. I did buy the tickets already, but we had to cancel it because again, we were supposed to go after the Summer Palace, but we underestimated how big the Summer Palace was. There's also kind of like a shopping area in Beijing. I think it's called the San Leiton area. I did plan to go kind of in between, but I didn't get to go shopping at all in Beijing. So I think if we had a couple extra nights, I would be able to go. So five nights in Beijing definitely was not enough. If I could, I would definitely spend maybe a couple weeks because there are a lot of things to see and do in Beijing. So if you have been to Beijing before, like I said, leave a comment down below and let us know what is some of your favorite things to do in Beijing. And if you are planning your trip to Beijing, make sure to check out one of these videos.